this is taking a minute. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, what a beautiful Thursday morning to have a conversation with the amazing Gary McPherson. And Gary, welcome. Thank you, Faye. And Gary is a property consultant and a buyer's advocate. What does that mean, Gary? Okay. There are two sides to any real estate transaction. There's the seller, or what we refer to as the vendor, and then there's the buyer. Sellers are in probably 95% of instances represented by a professional who knows the industry and generates the best possible price for the property that you got trying to sell because you only get one chance to sell it. On the other side of the equation, the buyer is left to their own devices. They probably buy once every 10 to 20 years. They have little idea as to how the market shifted or changed, let alone what rules and regulations are required or ideally how to do what they need to do. And they get put up against these qualified real estate agents and expected to come out the other side without overspending or overcapitalizing. I kind of slot in on the side of the buyer. So I'm a registered real estate agent, licensed. I do, I've done all the sales training, all the auction training. I'm an auctioneer. I do all of that stuff. But I use all of my powers for good and I help the buyers. Okay. And, and in what way do you help buyers? Because I always look at, at a purchase of a property or a sale of a property as emotional. Correct. And people can make mistakes when they purchase something, particularly if in, they're in a hurry or something like that. So how do you actually help them take a step back and really look at what they're doing? Because as a buyer's advocate, what my understanding is that you go out and you'll search properties for them and then you will bring them in and give them all the information that they actually need so that they can make a good decision. Correct. The aim of a, of a good buyer's advocate is to take the concepts, the dreams, of the buyer and to distill them down out of a very limbic state into a very logical and, and neo state. Um, so I run uh, preliminary meetings with clients and I determine four main things, which are price, location, size, and condition of the property. Now, all of those can be referred to in an emotional state, but they all translate to a very logical basis. Now, those four items are all interchangeable. You can trade one for the other. Very rarely will you get them all but they're the things that we distill down to a, a point where we know what we want, where we want it, and how much we want to spend and what condition it's in. Once you have that determined and it's very clear in your mind, going to market is an entirely different process. So the, the easiest way for me to explain this is a lot of my clients will spend six or eight months going to market with a concept of what they think they want finding stuff that they love that they can't afford or finding stuff that they can afford that they absolutely hate or looking at areas that they don't really want to live in just so that they can spend the budget that they've got and get the style of property that they want or having no idea how to renovate. And then after six months of being ground up by the market and being told that they can't have what they want and, and just utter and sheer disappointment, they come to me and we systemize the process apply a little bit of logic to it, take mm. as much emotion out of it, but still get them what they want at the end of the day. Mm. But I think they need someone like you who can take them and sit them down and really hone in on what they can and they can't do, where they're actually sitting, how much they can afford realistically, because a lot of the time people want to buy something and it's right out of their price bracket but they want to live in a specific area because that's where they want to be. Yep. So there's lots of things that need to be considered when someone's purchasing a property, whether it's a home, whether it's a, in a high rise, whether it's a townhouse or a unit or what it is. And location is one of their priorities. Is that what you find? Yeah. You want to do all of this work before you even go to re.com. Before you turn on the internet, open the, the Mac and, and go for it. You want to know where you what you're aiming for before you take off. We had a bit of a chat before this and we, in, in relation to knowing where you're going before you start. It's mm -hmm. the same thing in every industry, property primarily. As a buyer, 
you need to know what is acceptable and what's not. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're wasting your time looking at things you're never going to buy or realistically can't buy. Now, I'll say this. I don't do budgets with people. I don't tell people how much they can spend. I don't tell them what's realistic for them. I don't do any of that. That's an entirely different process, generally handled by a broker and by the buyers. All I need to know are what are the parameters of my task? What are the rules of my game? Once I know what my rules are, how much I've got, how much deposit I've got, what timeframes I've got for settlement, all of these bits and pieces, then I go to market and I play. Now, I'll say this other thing too, I, very quickly. We talked about emotion a couple of mm. minutes ago. Buying is an emotional experience. Absolutely. So is selling. Absolutely. Buying tends to leave you at the mercy of a, and I'm not saying all real estate agents are bad. They're not. Most of my friends, a lot of my good friends are real estate agents and they're very ethical at what they do. But it's a game and they play the game well. Real estate agents, for the most part, will tweak and tug and play with the emotion of the buyer to generate a better dollar. Mm -hmm. Just stop and think for a second. It's possible, if you're skilled enough, that you can tug and tweak and twist at the emotion of a seller if you know what buttons to push mm -hmm. so that they sell it for a better price. And that's what I do. So you you do the negotiations for for the person who's purchasing or selling, yeah. and it's it's all about being being realistic, isn't it? When when they're purchasing or they're selling, yes, but, and being honest with you with yep. what they can and they can't do. Do you ever find anyone who's not being realistic really um, has a higher perspective of what they want to buy but they're down lower how do you how do you process that how do you work with them time to will, get them to understand time time will do that for me right i do as much preliminary due diligence as possible to get a person's mindset correct mm. person sometimes we get the occasional client that says yes yes i know i've got 750 and i know that i can only afford a, a two-bedroom villa unit in that area let's go and i show them a number of two-bedroom villa units and then they start sending me three-bedroom houses large-scale blocks million dollar properties and they say oh this is possible for us or alternatively the better one that i get is real estate agents that have a in a fluctuating market have a tendency to quote low uh, i'm not going to use the I'm not quoting word. I say quote low. Mm -hmm. My clients are of the belief that because it's written on realestate.com that it's that price, that that's the price it will sell at. No, we all know full well that it won't. Um, I get those that then sent to me and I, I'll say to them, it won't sell at that price. This is the price it will sell for. Uh, but we'll do the due diligence and we'll show up at the auction and we'll stand there and watch as it goes. Now, I'm not averse to taking a lot of my clients to two or three auctions in the early stages of the process because to be brutally frank you should sometimes we need to be conditioned to what the market's actually delivering right? we have a hope and we have a dream but without the proper reality conditioning we're never going to get our minds right mm. and going to auctions i love going to auctions just watching them sitting in the background or standing in the background and watching people uh, bid for a property and there's no real expectation and the price that they put on properties isn't the true value or the true price of the property because it can go up high or it can it can drop and sell at a price that's better than what is anticipated. True. Auctions are a lot, what I refer to as a lot of mm, I don't like auctions. I think I, I've experienced auctions and... Um, yeah, and, and just thinking about the emotion of people trying to bid you down so that you can just sell the property so that they can get it if you're in the background as the person selling the property and thinking, go to hell. You're not getting it for that price. Well, that's how I responded to it. But, you know, it's it's all negotiable, isn't it? Yep, that's your agent's issue. That's not your issue. Though. mm. mm. And do you find that a lot of people um, 
in this economic climate, what's it like going and purchasing houses, townhouses, units, whatever it might be? There are a number of really good things on the market at the moment and good things always sell. And they generally sell them a little bit more than what the market's asking. There are a number of poor quality properties on the market at the moment that require a bit of work. And these things will just sit around for quite some time. Uh, it's not what I would consider to be a king tide or a rising tide at the moment in terms of real estate. It's what I would consider to be a dual speed market. So there's good and there's bad. Okay. Okay. What what does it look like in the next 12 months as far as property sales go and the interest rates, like the interest rates are keep going up. So there are a lot of people out there sitting on the bones of their bum, really struggling to keep their homes, but will probably have to sell them or they'll be taken off them by the banks, which is a bit sad. Uh, I don't know that we're going to see the default rate that is anticipated. Um, there is a what we call a mortgage cliff coming. And that's got a lot to do with the fact that um, interest rates were at 2% and they're now at 6 mm. So there's a threefold increase. That's 300% up. So if you had a $2,000 mortgage interest only, it's now going to be at 6000 a month and effectively you're going to see some major trouble. We're not at that cliff yet. Cost of living pressures are really starting to bite. I would suggest that somewhere around about mid to late this year, you're going to see an interest rate retraction, maybe 150 basis points, a percentage and a half. Um, but you'll see that pullback. Now, the reason I suggest that is because, well, I could sit here and, and say I've spoken to people and I've got inside information and all that sort of, but it's anybody's best guess at this point in time. I don't see that they really have a choice because if they don't, you're going to see a default rate and default rates generally this a high default rate. And high default rates generally the precursor to a re, um, recession or depending on how quickly it hits, a depression. And mm. you don't want to be in charge of the country when that happens. No, no. And I remember when interest rates were up around 17%, 17.5%. 1991. Huge. Yeah, huge, massive. I bought, I bought my first home in 91 at 17%. Yeah, yeah. I bought my first home. I can't remember when, and it was 4.1%. Something something like that, but it's not realistic these days. But, Gary, what is a tip that you can give those people out there who want to buy a property and they're not really sure or don't have the confidence to be able to go and pursue it themselves, how do they find a buyer's advocate and what sort of questions do they need to ask that buyer's advocate to find out whether they're the right person for them? Okay. Uh, if I was looking for a buyer's advocate, first question I would ask is um, how long they've been doing it. Um, I'd ask them how well they know the agents in the area that I'm looking at because relationships are key, uh, whether they've had experience in that area. I'd ask them whether they charge percentage or fixed fee because some of the the real estate uh, buyers advocates will charge you a percentage of what they buy. And I don't see the sense in that personnel. I'm a fixed fee sort of person. Um, and I'd ask whether the I, the person that I'm speaking to is the person that I'm going to be working with or whether I'm going to be working with somebody else. And if I'm going to be working with somebody else, I'd want to make sure that that person that I'm working with, I gel with. And that's kind of where it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about... Um... Um, personality, isn't it? Working together and um, gelling and making it work for each each person. Yep, it's exp- yep. it's experience, it's connections, um, and it's fair and equitable fees. Yeah, but that's kind of where that sits. Anything else you'd like to say before we go, Gary? Okay, just before I take off, um, I have been I have been doing this for about seventeen years now. Um, I was a contract negotiator before I started doing this. I used to work on large scale sort of stuff, so roads and, and infrastructure projects. So I know my way around a deal. Um, I've watched people for the last 15 plus years grind themselves in this market, uh, in multiple markets, sellers, buyers markets, etc. And I've realized that there's a fundamental disconnect between um, selling and buying so much that the sellers get all the support and the buyers get none. 
the aim for 24 will be to change that dramatically. Now, I can't reach every single person. It's not possible for me to do so, but it is possible for me to put some content together and deliver some live events that will upscale some people and get them to a point where they can do pretty much what I do if they follow the system. And that's what 24 is going to be about, Faye. It's going to be about delivering some information. Good. So um, let's um, make sure you let people know that when that starts so that people can, who the buyers are that can come and learn from you so that they are upskilling and have a better understanding of where they sit in the marketplace. Exactly what we're looking to do. We want to send people to market fully armed and ready to rock and roll. It's no, no longer going to be a seller's game. It's going to be a buyer's game. Good. I like to hear that. Thanks, Gary, and um, wonderful information. Not a worry, Faye. Absolute pleasure joining you this morning. Bye for now, everyone.